And then you have a real re, a reorganization, a political reorganization of the entire planet with the stackers at the head of each fiefdom. But since yeah. we don't hate each other and we all understand reality, we can actually work together and really make the world a much better stable uh, place, stable, stable within our environment. That's it. I'm getting 100 cups of coffee starting now. Hey guys, it's Rafi from the Endgame Investor. I got Phil Lowe back with me, and uh, he's one of my subscribers at the Endgame Investor. I really love his uh, his wit and his humor and his ability to translate the concepts that I speak about into more of real world how we get from A to B. So to to explain, uh, first of all, we're going to talk about um, how the Endgame sort of plays into action as gold becomes revalued because we have this concept okay, gold's going to be revalued. Let's say. It's revalued now from let's say two thousand dollars an ounce to twenty thousand tomorrow, and then everybody seems to think, and it, I understand why they think this, that everything will be the same except wedding rings will be ten times more expensive. Okay, now I get why people think that, but that's not true. Uh, and the, the way that I the, the way that I'm able to explain it is that we have a pyramid and it starts at gold and it goes up and up and up. And if you don't realize it, we're still on the pyramid, and everything is derived from gold. Therefore, if gold changes, the entire pyramid gets, you know, the whole size of it goes crazy and then the prices of everything get out of whack. Now, people can say that, oh, okay, Ravi, that makes conceptual sense, but why should I, that, that's, that, that makes academic sense, but why do I necessarily have to translate it, that into the real world? Why can't it just be that wedding rings will be more expensive and everything will be fine? Okay, and then I have trouble explaining why, but I know it's not going to be that way. I know it. So I found the guy who can really help uh, translate into why that is not the case why it will not be a world where wedding rings are more expensive and everything is fine. Uh, and that's Phil. And he's got a channel at Rumble and I'll put a link to it in the description. It's called the bitter draft. I was going to go for the Phil lowdown, but you know, bitter draft is fine. <laughs> well, I was, I was originally naming it the uh, Rafi is correct channel. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. It's the whole, it's the whole reason I started it is, oh. uh, is because of you, Rafi. I was inspired by your videos and, and Mario's. And uh, I realized, you know, there's a million voices. I, I was listening when I first started, and I talked about this before, one of the panic attacks and stuff, when I first started, I was digesting five to eight hours of financial YouTube rumble. Who Anyone want to talk about finance? I was digesting all of it a day. I was just watching, you know, I have it while I'm working. I'd have it while I'm exercising. And over time, I realized, as I said before, you are the best in the in this in the space. You are the best. Now, maybe there's somebody living in a cave somewhere smarter than you, but uh, he needs to make a YouTube channel. <laughs> um, so, but if I had one criticism of you, and it's a very minor one, I it's that you stay in the you stay in the distilled ether, and yeah. it's hard to uh, it's hard to get into the real world. But that's my weakness that is my weakness, and that's why I'm bringing you on because. <clears throat> somewhere in the middle of the concepts and the actuality and i have i have trouble bringing myself into the bottom parts of the pyramid of the top parts you know yeah so that's that's my weakness and that's why i want to talk to you so um, i'm smart enough i'm smart enough to understand you're right but i also have experience teaching high school economics to gum popping eye rolling you know teenagers who don't want to be there and i'm like just let me give you some very simple concepts and you can take that and maybe apply it to your daily life where you'll amount to something. But right. So, <laughs> okay. So I want, I want to just uh, start with two stories and, a, and an analogy. Um, so the analogy is very simple. Like if you take algebra two or a calculus and you have an equation, it's got all these Greek letters on one side and all these weird things and this over that and squares and, and exponents and, 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 and then on this, on the other side, you have the same thing. And then, if some computer comes in or some mathematician genius comes in and says, oh, X equals six, and he's able to figure it out, right? So what you're really what you're really saying is that this equation with all these variables and this crazy stuff is the same as saying just X equals six. So in economic sense, we can I can say I understand the simple concept. Gold is money. And now from that equation, you build out things and you and you do the same to both sides of the equation. Gold equals money, and then you add this and you add that. And then you, you end up with this humongous equation where we where we are now which is the big pyramid. And then I come down and I say, well, I don't really know how to solve this equation. I don't know how exactly how to do the, the, the mathematical functions to make it say that gold equals money, but I do know that gold equals money. And I know it will simplify down to that in the end. So uh, the problem is I'm not a mathematician. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna try to do here. We're gonna try to show you how this big equation is just gold equals money on both sides. Uh, yes. the, the two, so the two stories, um, one story uh, is why I'm here right now sitting in this house is that I'm flying tomorrow back to Israel 
um, but I'm waiting for a delivery uh, of uh, one ounce gold coin and a, a roll of silver quarters, which is a little bit late. And I thought it was gonna, I was gonna get it by now, but I have to come back here. And and I was at another house, but that's why I'm here right now because I'm waiting for gold and silver. And the second story is that I found out this is fun that my wife only exists physically in the world because of the gold top of 1980, right? So oh, I, I, my, my father-in-law told me the story of how they, how they met, how he met his, uh, his wife, my mother-in-law, and she's from South Africa, and the family sold all their gold holdings in like 1980, in January 1980, and they had enough money to buy a flight to, uh, to, Amer to Miami, and that's in, in, you know, my father-in-law ended up at the same dinner as she was, so they started talking, and you know, they ended up married, and uh, thanks to uh, the gold. Uh, the gold bull market of 1980, which, you know, it fits into my life perfectly. There you go. <laughs> okay. So that's what we're going to talk about. So, Phil, you just made a video on your channel. Um, yes. Distill it down, down to down for me and explain, explain to me why it is, why it is and how it is that if gold is revalued to 20, 30, $40,000 an ounce, why isn't the world the same place with more expensive wedding rings? Okay. So my, uh, I had a viewer on my channel ask me what he said, well, why don't they just revalue gold to $2,000? What's the problem? And I said, the gold is valued on the Federal Reserve's balance sheet at $42 an ounce. So theoretically, you are supposed to be able to take $42 an ounce or $42 and show, show up on, knock on the door of the Eccles building and exchange that for an ounce of gold. The problem is the gold window is, is closed. Now they're, that should be the end of it right there because if you if you disconnect it then you know if if i have if i have a $5 poker chip and i say hey rafi you know that's i'll give you um uh take this poker chip if for payment for something and i've got you know an ounce of silver back there and you're going to say well can i exchange it and i'm saying no absolutely not well then that, then it's not connected it's not really connected that's that's you know i have i have some silver and i have a poker chip but they are not connected unless you can redeem it so normally that would collapse, uh, but the way they're keeping it going is by offering more and more and more and more gold. And as I spoke on my channel last week, I made an episode where I said, oh, they owe, you know, some multiple. But I, I was looking at the numbers and I thought they owed, you know, 50,000 tons. And I was, they owe 50 million tons. Like they have 8,300 tons in the vault and the, the federal government owes something like 25, 30, 40, 50 million tons of gold. That's the notes they've written off the, that tiny amount of gold they have. And it's actually an astronaut. I mean, it's a very large amount of gold, but compared to the notes, there's not enough gold in the solar system to pay it back. Um, so they're they're offering more and more and more gold and the to, to pay for that 42 or to offer for that $42 uh, dollar an ounce in the distant infinite time horizon. So you, if you, when they close the window, they're saying theoretically, we'll open it back again. Someday we'll open it back up and we will offer gold at $42 an ounce. And here's more, we'll promise you more gold while we're, while we're waiting, we'll just promise more and more and more and more and more and more, more, right? <clears throat> so the present value of the gold today is what, 1900, it's about $1,900. Right. So you're taking you're taking the promise for gold in the infinite time horizon of forty two dollars. And you're saying, well, I'm not going to live forever. So I'm going to take my gold now and I'll pay the premium of, you know, one thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars to have it now. Right. Rather than the promise, you know, because money money today is always worth more than than money tomorrow. So if he revalues Unless to you live in a negative interest rate environment like we do now, nothing makes sense and we're all more. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, well, real money. So we don't we don't live in a interest rate. The real money has a positive interest rate. It's the promises for money that have a negative interest rate. But fair enough. Right, right, right. Um, so where was I? Oh, so if we re if we revalue to two thousand dollars in the infinite future, right? So that that's the government, that's the government saying you know what? We printed too many notes and we can't redeem them all at 42. So we're going to devalue our currency by 47 times. And that's that's not even that's not even close to how much they have to revalue to redeem. But let's say they revalue to 47 times or yeah, they devalue 47 times to get to 42 times 47 is about 2000. So now you are sitting here and you said at the end of time, when the last red dwarf in the Milky Way twinkles out, and the universe has a cold death, I can redeem 
at twenty two thousand dollars an ounce, I can take two thousand dollars, go to the Federal Reserve, and do that. Or I can have two thousand dollars right now. I'm sorry, I can have an ounce of gold right now for two thousand dollars, right? So the the present value is identical to the future value. Who on earth would wait to redeem the money for gold? So everyone rushes. Everyone rushes to the uh, gold uh, bullion dealers, right, to redeem the money now. The gold price skyrockets. Now, the connection that you brilliantly came to is that gold is the price matrix, right? Everything is actually valued in gold. It is all uh, one, you know, the and it's valued in the present value of gold, not the future value of gold. So coffee, and I, I say this on my channel all the time, in 1971, coffee was, what, a nickel? And gold was $35 an ounce, right? So coffee was one seven hundredth of an ounce of gold. Now gold is $2,000 an ounce, one $1,900, yeah. And coffee is $1.85, $1.90 at Starbucks. It's one one thousandth of an ounce of gold. So coffee has gotten relatively cheaper in gold terms because we've gotten better harvesting coffee and you know more technology, whatever, better farming. Uh, but there's a logical chain. It's still related to gold. So if the present value of gold skyrockets the present value of everything else is going to skyrocket and so if you just now this is very rough as i say on my as i said on my show this is very rough the the when you when you have a giant smash in the price matrix you know it's like ripples everywhere you know it's not it's not going to be like you raise uh gold up uh 47 times and then everything else raises up 47 times exactly there's going to be you know it's going to be doing this right but roughly, very roughly, as a back of the envelope comp calculation, if you raise gold to, um, sorry, if you raise the future value of gold to $2,000, the present value of gold is going to say skyrocket to $60,000, something like that. It would be somewhere 60, 90, maybe. It's impossible to truly calculate, but it follows a logical pattern. I think you agree with that, or a logical well, pattern. I, I, have, I have calculated what gold would have to be for all of the dollars to redeem all of the gold in Fort Knox. And it's something like $50,000 an ounce. I have, I calculated 75,000, but on my, but something, whatever, <laughs> whatever. It's all, it's all, it's all monopoly. Exactly. So if, if gold goes to $60,000 in the present day, then you're talking $60 coffee, $70 coffee, right? Shmeesh, it's just 300 bucks. What is that? Like a hundred cups of coffee? Nobody is going to pay $70 for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. No, there's, you know, there's there's a handful of people who that would not affect. I mean, it's the, it's the quadzillionaires. Even, even, you know, the rich people are gonna be like, I'm not paying $70 for coffee, get out of here. That's it. I'm getting a hundred cups of coffee starting now. So, and this is, this is not, this is a revaluation. This is not an inflation. So there's no more, no more dollars have entered the system. So it's not like you can go to your boss and say, hey, coffee's 70 bucks, you know, I need a, I need a raise. He doesn't have the money. He doesn't have any extra. So coffee goes to 70, let's say, hypothetically, somewhere between, you know, 50 and $90, something like that. The Starbucks manager goes, oh my God, no one's going to buy this coffee. So he's going to cut, he's going to cut the staff down to bare minimum. He's going to get rid of all the Frappuccino double mocha latte stuff. It's, you know. This isn't Yemeni, it's Sulawesi. And the cup's shaking. I don't want my coffee shaking. And he's going to cut the cost of coffee down as absolutely much as he can. He's going to get it down to, let's say, $25. Nobody's, nobody's going to buy a cup of coffee for $25, right? So especially especially because everything else is, like like I said in my channel, like Stouffer's lasagna, you're talking about $450 family size Stouffer's lasagna, right? So everyone is panicking. Is that chaos. the one that doesn't come closer to home? What's up? Is that the one where nothing comes closer to home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still got my American jingles in my head. Though. I've never had Stouffer's, but yeah. Stouffer's, yeah, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. It might be. Um, where was I? Oh, okay. So the 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 coffee. So nobody's buying coffee at all. Yeah, I'll have a coffee. Guppy, trout, mermaid, or whale, please. Starbucks shut down. In fact, all the Starbucks is shut down, right? People focus solely on getting food into their bellies and keeping the lights on it if they can you know it, and, and, and then it, and then all the all the leveraged stockholders of starbucks they get margin calls and that creates another ripple somewhere else and you know yes yes yes, yes yes all yeah. all the i mean if if stouffer's if a family meal of stouffer's lasagna in dollar terms is 450 dollars 
people are, it's a panic sale. It's an instant panic sale for everything. Okay, wait, hold on. What what I wanted you to focus on, what I, what I found the most interesting part of your video was, of this lesson, was the, it see like, I'm tr try to explain, and I can't do it quite well enough, why it is that food prices will go crazy, but the prices of, prices of a Lamborghini will like go slightly up maybe. And what, like, it, you, know, you were talking about a Lamborghini, like you could buy Lamborghinis for really cheap as much as you could buy, like for a, a gallon of gas, you could buy the- Oh product. yeah. The, the, how, this, how does that actually, mechanically happen? How does that- this actually, I know it happens and I know why it happens, but I can't describe how it happens. So this actually happened to my great grandfather. So my great grandfather was a stockbroker in the uh, 1920s. He was part of the Lowe brothers and they had, they had $2 million in like 1922, you know? And uh, 19, so my grandfather, my grandfather goes and my great grandmother- uh, to France for a tour and they come back and the car is gone. And it was like this, it was like, you know, 1920s Packard touring car. So it's like this 12 cylinder monster. That's, you know, $500 in 1920. Um, and, uh, the car's gone and he, they, he got wiped out and had to sell the, uh, the family touring car, this luxury car. And he was literally on, on the, he was on the streets of Patton with a sign saying, I'll, whatever I can take for my car, I'll take, right? So what happens is when, so it, in my, my channel, I, I went over this in the video, I said gas goes to about 175. You know, if, if gold goes up to 60, 70, $80,000 an ounce, gas will shoot up to $150 a gallon, roughly. You know, I, again, can't predict precisely, but roughly something, something disgustingly high where like no one's going to drive their cars anywhere. Um, and the, 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 the owner of the Lamborghini Especially, I mean, if he's a stacker, he's fine. But if the owner of the Lamborghini is a Bitcoin billionaire, right? He's watching Bitcoin go to zero right now. Like right? Bitcoin is collapsing. Right Why now. does Bitcoin go to zero and not a billion? Oh, because because Bitcoin is a derivative of the dollar, as you know yourself. Like it's not. <laughs> there's no. As I, I've said this on my channel many times. No, that's Bitcoin, that, that's conceptually why it goes to zero. But you were yeah. saying like, yeah, as but you you made it more more into the okay, 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 reality, okay. like. What you were saying was, if I'm if I'm right, that okay, gas goes to 175, Stouffer's goes to 60 dollars a lasagna or a kugel, and uh, whatever whatever it is, and it's 70 dollars yeah. for a cup of coffee. Fresh in your coffee, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it coming. Put the pot down. Get away. You know, all the Bitcoin people who have billions of dollars in Bitcoin, they all sell their Bitcoin so they can have the dollars so they can afford the food to stay alive. Right. That's why. That's that's exactly right. Yes. I mean, people, if you if you wake if you woke up and this just the price just happened. What would you do, right? And you don't, you're not a stacker, right? What do you do? You go, oh my God, I need to sell this stuff right now so I can get enough food to buy, you know, enough enough dollars to buy food and gas for the week, right? So yeah, so the, always... so the really big ticket items, the stuff that's worth a lot of money, everybody puts that in the market at the same time and prices for those things go down. Or, or collect. Well, best stay stable. Are you going to, are you? Are you going to buy a car that gets 10 miles per gallon when, ga when gas is $175 <laughs> per right, so gallon? The price, of, the price of the Lamborghini falls, the world, the price of coffee is still $70 a cup. Yeah, well, I the luxury, I mean, coffee might go down, but it wouldn't go down. It's like Starbucks is a luxury good. It's not, it's not even like two scoops of Folgers in your kitchen. It's like, you know, you go to Starbucks, there's the ambiance, you know. <laughs> that's that's a luxury good luxury goods like if you're the situation is like the great depression where like as i said on my channel the dad gets his paycheck he goes to the store he buys a 90 dollars loaf of bread and a 120 dollars jar of peanut butter and maybe a couple of potatoes and he takes that home. And that is, that's the food for the week for the family. Like that's the, that's the severity of the crisis. You know, it, it just a scary thought, or maybe it's a good thought. I'm not sure if it's scary or, or uplifting that, I mean, I could imagine in 1920s Germany, they had just survived World War One. They're used to famine, they're used to hardship. And so they can they can get through a week with a loaf of bread and a few jars of peanut butter or whatever. So in, in 1920s, you could imagine people are rough enough and and not spoiled enough and real enough to be able to handle that for a while. But you talk about this generation of people, especially in the United States, especially in the Western world, they will lose it. They, oh, absolutely. They will completely lose it. They will go insane. They're already insane. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what, like, I don't want to be anywhere near them. Um, they're just going to be a bunch of rabid 
primate things. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think so. I, 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 yeah, I can see law and order breaking down pretty quick on that situation like that. I mean, you know, back then, I mean, every country, you know, you look at the pictures, people still like identified as like American or German or whatever. I think there was still like a communal pride. We've had so many, we've had so much like Marxism indoctrination. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to take mm -hmm. you off track. So you could, you, you can, uh, on the lines of what you said before. And uh, as you progress in the video, you were talking about, okay, the Lamborghini stays stable and everybody sells their stuff. The Bitcoin billionaires are nothing. And, you know, the stackers, we can buy things for like a dime. And uh, right. so, so what, when, I, what when, I was saying, like a house for 75 ounces, that sounds, oh, that's crazy, but it's going to happen at some point. Absolutely. No, 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 no. It's logically, logically, it makes perfect sense. So the asset, with the asset crash, people say, I need the, you know, it's Maslow's hierarchy needs, you need food before shelter. So uh, people who didn't stack will have to sell their houses. Now, gold will, with gold at 90, uh, silver is at six right? Because it go, it'll go back to its monetary value. And as I said on my channel, you can show up at the grocery store with a 1963 dime and buy that Stouffer's lasagna. I mean, you know, small amount of silver will we'll buy that. We'll buy that Stouffer's lasagna. My kids just love Stouffer's lasagna. It's good. It tastes like it's made with fresh ingredients. It's costing. Yeah, you can make the same calculation now. What, 350, 350 a gallon for gas? How much yeah. silver is in a silver dime? About the same. Yeah, it's uh, you Trump, can, I mean, yeah, yeah, except the promises the, when the promises go like you're that's all you have is the money, as you know, on your show. So, you know, the, the people hold the people holding all the promises are going to get completely uh, railroaded. So, yeah, people sell people sell their house for whatever they can get for it, just like the and, and the, this is this is another one. The luxury houses will will hit they'll hit the lowest. So if you if you want to live in a house with a waterfall. Uh, and you can stack gold. That, that's your chance to do it. Like if if that's what you've always yeah, wanted. Like, my little friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you want the Scarface, uh, if you want the Scarface <laughs> house, that is the time. You know, I I I was my family was on the other side of this in the in the Great Depression. So I I'm I remember all the stories my grandfather told me of like you know they had to sell the luxury house, they had to sell the luxury car. You know now so now I'm thinking I'll be on the other end of this one. <laughs> yeah, Not that I'll I want. I'll put that house. clip in. I'll put a Scarface. I don't even like that movie, but it comes to yeah. mind. <laughs> Anyway, so the stackers, the stackers come in and like you keep saying, it's like an explosion of, of, of real money into the system. They go, I'll buy that, 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 I'll buy that. And then yeah. the, the real money, and hopefully the hope is, and it's your hope as well as mine, the, the, the real money bursts out with such force that we don't have a zombie apocalypse, right? So people are, people will be poor, but you know, they can, when they sell their house, they'll have gold and silver. Now, you know, if they bought the gold and silver now, they could have, it's, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of gold and silver instead of their entire house worth. But, you know, you, you tried to warn them, <laughs> maybe, or you, or they didn't know about you. You know, you, you're, you're not in charge of the world and it's not your job to, um, you know, give everybody uh, full value for, not full value, but, you know, whatever estimated value they thought their house was worth, you know, the market is what the market is. So during that time, you give them the gold and the silver they need to buy the food and the gas and everything else they need. They give you your real estate and then they turn into rent or, or they move away, but or you, you you end up with renters basically. So the the, yeah. the the stackers become landlords and investors and the capitalists and the whole system restarts and there's a new, it's really going to be, as I'm going to say on my next episode, you know, I'm looking for, I'm not looking forward to the the pain period, but afterwards it's going to be a real renaissance. Yeah. So that's, that's why uh, another mistake that the gold bugs make is that, oh, they say, oh, central banks bought this and this amount of gold and it's, you know, it's really great. And uh, the value of gold is going to go up because central bank demand, blah, blah, blah. No, but like when this really happens, it's going to be like a burst of real money into the system. Yes. Um, but I mean, if governments have any significant amount of gold left, they'll be able to retain whatever thugs that they can uh, to continue to oppress us. It's going to be less, but it might be less. It, yeah, it'll be less, but it'll, they'll still be able to maintain a core of power. I'm hoping that there is no damn gold in Fort Knox. <laughs> I'm hoping that all these central banks are so stupid and they have such in incredible faith in their gold substitute or gold uh, they sell the placeholder gold. Or, or whatever, that they sell it in order to try to save their currencies. And then the, the end game of end games, they have nothing. 
And then you have a real re, a reorganization, a political reorganization of the entire planet with the stackers at the head of each fiefdom. But since yeah. we don't hate each other and we all understand reality, we can actually work together and really make the world a much better stable uh, place, a stable, stable within our environment where we're not we're leaching resources and just extra, like, you know, polluting with externalities, externalizing the costs, we're really working together. And this it's, I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. I don't know if it will happen, but, but a real global end game where governments have nothing is the greatest opportunity for good people to actually be in charge of yeah. stuff and make the world good. The phone's ringing again. Yeah. Lord Phil has a nice ring to it. I have to say. So. <laughs> um, anyway, wait, no, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know which way that's going to go. And then, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I'm worried. I am. I am worried about the government getting very tyrannical on the way down. I mean, they could be. You know, they they could say, "Hey, we want everyone's gold. We're putting. You know, sorry, we we lost all the gold in Fort Knox. So give us this. Give us your gold now, and we'll refill Fort Knox and give you some paper again." Yeah. So on my last on my last Patreon, which I made public, um, I was I was discussing a story in the in the Babylonian Talmud and the Gemara uh, about what happened uh, immediately prior to the destruction of the Second Temple. And it basically was like three <clears throat> three big rich men in Jerusalem came together with the rabbis and said, look, we're under siege. We're going to supply the city with about with all the goods that we can. And they, you know, they put them all into silos, all the food uh, and everything they were going to provide. And it was enough for 21 years for the entire city. And sometimes the Gemara exaggerates and, or it puts in code and numbers and it doesn't really mean 21. It means like the Gematria of 21 or some kind of code they're trying to put in so that we can understand. It. I don't, but in this case, it might be literal. Because if if uh, if it was uh, really a time of poverty and gold and silver was so valuable, then you could see that that you know 21 mil 21 years of supplies could have uh, could have saved the city. Um, and and then I connected that back into into Isaiah, which uh, there was a verse in Isaiah which said, uh, you know, if you're if you're hungry, uh, come everyone who's thirsty, come and drink water. You know, and it's talking about spirituality. It's not talking about water. And it's if you don't have money. If you don't have silver, then forget it. You can get it for free. So my question was, how do you get it for free? I mean, it's nice that Isaiah says this, but is there going to be like magical water cartons, like just materializing in the middle of the air? No, it's not, it's, it's not going to be a magical world, but it will be a world, I think, where you have rich people that are there are enough of them to supply the poor people with the bread and the water that they need to survive. And and yeah, you know, that that's what I think is going to happen. I think the stackers are going to take over. Yeah, yeah. Or or violent mobs will murder the stackers. And no, them. no. <laughs> <laughs> now I hope that what I said. This is what I said on my uh, on my channel was you need a community. Like no man is an island, and uh, when it when the time comes, be as generous as you can to when you're buying someone's house. Like don't don't give them exactly seventy five ounces. Maybe give them a hundred. You know, try and be, be generous, be nice, and uh, you know build build a community together. Because if you if you think about the incentives, right? Humans humans respond to incentives. That's a um, that's an economic you know precept of especially the Austrian school. Uh, if you get everyone a bunch of silver and you know if, if if everyone's completely broke and destitute and they're kicked out of the house, they have they have no stake in the game. We have to keep everyone having a stake in the game so they want to rebuild civilization and they want to you know rebuild law and order. They want to you know have schools that don't teach gender theory. Not cool. Bro, our genders are all reversed. Now I gotta what you call it instead of a kajigger, you stupid what you call it. Um, you know, you have to you have to keep them into the game. So the way you do that is is you know keeping them like they're good, they're gonna be poor. Like I, I'm not saying you're gonna I can't tell all my neighbors, yeah, you're gonna live exactly the life we were living. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. It's a lot of toil and hardship ahead of us, but um, but you know, you can. You can get them. You can get them out of dire, 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 dire yeah. poverty. You know. Yeah, I can't. I can't picture myself. You know, talking to the people that are poo pooing me now and like just tell, calling us all crazy. And like, well, you didn't listen to me. And yeah, so, me, so I'm you. not going to help you while you're starving in the street. No, of course I'm going to help. Like, uh, I'm not going to be vindictive. Well, that and that community. I mean, when you know, if if in America, you know, we all we all are a lot of people are armed, right? So when the when the gangs come, if you have built a community, you have a militia. Yeah. <laughs> if it comes to that, I I I hope I hope none of this comes to that. But if it comes to that, 
if you have a bunch of people who you gave silver to and they have silver in their houses, <laughs> then they don't want their houses robbed either. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you, you build, you build the community, you get the, you get the organization, the self-organization, which is what our founders specifically wrote for us to do. Then you can, you know, then you can keep, keep the wolves at bay. So that's, that's my, that's my plan. <laughs> right. So I would just, I would just briefly recommend for everyone to watch uh, Phil's video in the description below. He, yeah. he operates at a section in the pyramid that is slightly below my ethereal space um, that I struggle to get out of. So um, hopefully there's if, someone below if, Phil that yeah. can, uh, you know, describe the even more nitty gritty get it up to the masses. that understand what I'm talking about. Understand what if Phil you want talking to- about. Maybe they exist somewhere. If you want to understand why Rafi is right, then watch my channel. That's what I say. I'm, I'm yeah, not right, doing right, a hot right. takes of the week. Yeah, yeah. So if you, if you have a sense that what I'm saying is true, but I'm not translating it into physical reality at a good enough um, degree, then Phil would be the next step. Um, and uh, maybe we'll collaborate in the future or we'll do some kind of project. Who knows? Um, but uh, things are coming together and uh, it looks good for the future. And um, I'm trying not to focus on the zombies. And I, right now, I just want to get back home before everything falls apart. That's probably much <laughs> what I say to everybody. Yeah, I'll see you next year, assuming that uh, everything's still spinning. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I think we have a maximum of two years. Phil thinks it's less. We'll see. And um, when everything breaks down, uh, when everyone has enough silver and gold uh, and the internet comes back up, I'll, I'll, I'll check back in. Godspeed, Rafi. Get home safely. Okay. Have a good day, man. <laughs>